or not in that, but um, Metro's YouTube channel. And uh, Councilwoman's going to get us started, and then we'll jump into the presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Do I need to stay here where they can see yeah, it? They can hear you from there. They can hear me. Okay. Hello. Thank you for everyone that came in person, and thank you for everyone that is attending virtually. Um, my name is Delicia Porterfield, and if you live in the Edge of Light community, now I am your councilwoman. I'm really excited about this project. This is the fourth traffic common project that we're getting in District 29, uh, which is amazing because unfortunately some of our uh, districts don't have any traffic common programs. So I'm really excited that we've been able to get these programs right here in our district. Um, currently, we have a project that we're working on for Castlegate, Owendale, and Forest View. So really excited to know that Angel Lake has now qualified for this particular program. So tonight we're going to go over the traffic comment program. We will talk about uh, what the recommendation is and we'll be able to get feedback from you all. And uh, hopefully we'll be able to get buy-in and uh, through the process and Amy will, will explain it um, more in detail. But for these projects to go forward, we have to have a certain amount of community support. So what we don't want is, you know, we try to go forward with a project and then um, you know, sometimes people in the community are not supportive of that of their project. So we have to make sure that we're getting the community support um, and getting our neighbors to buy in. So we'll talk about that process and how we'll actually vote to determine if this is a project that we want to see happening in our neighborhood, which hopefully this is a project that everyone can support. I'm going to pass around this sign in sheet. Um, could you raise your hand if you get my newsletter? Okay. Awesome. Thank you. So if you um, get the newsletter, you can just write your name. But if you don't get the newsletter, if you can do your name here and your email address here, then I'll make sure to sign you all up for the newsletter. Um, I also brought some cards. So if you don't have um, my card with my cell phone number, I'll make sure that you all have that. Um, for the people that are attending virtually, you can email me to get signed up for my newsletter. That email address is Delicia for district 29 at gmail.com. So that is D-E-L-I-S-H-I-A-F-O-R district, the number 29 at gmail.com. You also can send me a text message with your email address and everyone here will get a physical card. Um, but if you don't have my cell phone number, my cell phone number is 615-208-3068. Again, that's 615-208-3068. And many people in this room can tell you it rings right here. <laughs> so you can send uh, text messages to the phone. You can call. This is my personal cell phone. Um, so if you have any questions or concerns, please feel free to reach out. So again, thank you all so much for coming. I'm going to pass this around and then we'll turn it over to Amy to start the presentation. Um, you said just edge of lake uh, or castle gate. Could, is, could this be expanding a little bit because the one is on the East Hill and everybody uses it as a thoroughfare to get to Countryway. And we personally have had this property damage. My husband has actually messaged, I believe you. You live on Wish Street? DC Trail. So this project is for Angel Lake. So, and Amy will be able to explain. So the question was, is this just for Angel Lake or is this expanding? So we're gonna talk about the traffic common program and how it works, but different communities have to apply for traffic common program. And there, it, there are merits that are graded to determine if your community qualifies. So Angel Lake qualified, Castlegate qualified, Forest View qualified, and uh, Owendale qualified. So this is not, um, if you live in another part of the district, this is strictly for Edge of Lake. So this is, and that's what uh, Amy will describe and explain. And if you live in another area and you're interested in traffic common, you can apply for the traffic common program. You would go to nashville.gov. There's a wonderful search bar. You just type in traffic common. The application will pop up. In the next newsletter that I sent out today, I just sent out a reminder for the meeting, but in the next newsletter, I'm going to send out the information of all of the communities and or all the areas in District 29 that have applied for Track of Common and where they are on the list. So you'll be able to see if your neighborhood has already applied and where your neighborhood is on the list. And if your neighborhood is not on the list, then you would want to go ahead and apply. Okay. And with that, we're going to kick it over to Amy. Thank you, Councilmember. I'm Amy Birch. Um, um, 
uh, truck engineer and consultant for uh, NDOT, the National Department of Transportation. So we help uh, facilitate this traffic calming program for, for the city. And with me, I have Eleni, who is monitoring the, um, the chat box and the online virtual. So if you are joining us virtually, and you have questions, we will um, we will open it up for questions at, uh, during the presentation or towards the end of the presentation, or feel free to put those in the chat box and we'll get to those as well. So um, again, this meeting is being recorded and um, and uh, let's see, trying to get that screen off. I think it just stays on when it's being recorded. There it goes. Um, this meeting is being recorded so that it will be posted to uh, Nashville's YouTube channel. Right, so we're here, like council member said, to talk about Edge of Lake and the traffic calming uh, project and selection of Edge of Lake um, into the traffic calming program. We'll start with a little bit of basics about what traffic calming is. Uh, we, we typically talk about the three E's of traffic calming, education, enforcement, and um, engineering. These three things work together to, um, our, and our goal is to reduce speed, speeding on residential streets. So. We, our department and our um, program specifically addresses the engineering of the street. So how do we modify the street or install devices on the street to uh, achieve slower vehicle speeds that makes it safer for all people to use the street? Um, so again, this program addresses residential streets. It's not uh, specific to, um, it, do, it doesn't apply to like Murfreesboro Road, um, which is a higher classification street. We're just talking about residential streets, and these are physical solutions like devices that we install on the street to reduce speeds over the length of the street. That's really our goal. We're not doing just a spot here. We're trying to get a slower speed throughout the length of that residential street. So this program uh, is a street program, meaning that we, we address a street by street basis based on data that we collect. And the applications we received were requested and made for traffic calming. Um, and so we uh, we look at a street by street basis. It's not a full broad area because we have limited resources and we want to target the areas that um, have demonstrated need for slowing speeds down. So outside of the traffic calming program, um, we like to share this information about the hub. Everyone familiar with the hub and how to reach reach uh, services like that. So the hub uh, is a place where if you see a street light that's out or a sign that's been knocked down, a traffic signal that's malfunctioning, you can go to the hub and report that and it sorts it to the right department um, and, and also gives you feedback about when it's been handled. Um, there's also, you, you can also go to the hub to request um, uh, intersection studies, like a specific study where you feel like there's a, there's a problem and, and that would go to the right department. So this is a very uh, popular program, um, and and then it's been uh, really well funded through council mm -hmm. and and uh, NDOT as far as um, being able to put the funds towards these types of projects. But over the last since our um, winter twenty twenty two, since our winter twenty two selection, we had four hundred and twenty six streets that had requested traffic calming across the county. So quite a bit. Um, so it's really you know and. This, your street having been selected was selected out of a broad pool of, of streets that are asking for traffic calming. Um, and we typically will uh, select about 25 streets at a time uh, every six months. So we're doing 50 streets a year through this program. Uh, and they're spread out all over the county. Uh, so how did we get from 426 uh, streets that want traffic calming um, to these 24 per selection that we, we um, identified? Identify those and select streets and we have we have a metric system. Uh, it's based on a 100 point scale essentially and we look at these um, 4 main criteria and they're weighted. As as shown here, but uh, primarily we're focused on safety and speeding. So our devices that we use are targeting speeding uh, traffic uh, and slowing that traffic down. So that's where our primary um, measurements are. So we base 50% on the measured speed. That we we go out and measure the speed on the street and compare that to the posted speed limit and look at that differential and give it a great uh, a score based on that. Um, and then we're also factoring in some uh, crash history information um, on the street. And then also neighborhood destinations and active transportation. We want to look at 
other uses of the street, not just vehicles, but uh, it, is there like a sidewalks? Uh, are there bike lanes? So we would expect um, uh, cyclists to be on the street, things like that. Uh, and destinations being proximity to the street and uh, to a school or to a um, community center, parks and things like that. So based on all this criteria and all the streets that have been requested traffic calming, we we add up those those scores for each street and select the top ones into the into the program for that selection. So Edu Lake was um, requested traffic calming and selected for um, the program. And it's the, the section between Murfreesboro Road and Bell Road. Oh, one that section. Yeah. That's why. Why right, right not include the whole? Sure. Yes. That, uh, that was what was uh, applied for on the application. And so that's what we focused on. Because the school is down there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and it, we, and we, we do these projects based on where the um, the request was made. And, and that doesn't mean that the other part of the street can't apply or um, uh, in the future. Like the block off. Right. Yeah. So um, this is a map of the um, the area. And as you can see, Bell Road um, is highlighted red, and so is Murfreesboro Road. Those are your higher classification streets. And this uh, edge of the lake connection between Bell and Murfreesboro Road uh, provides that connection. It's classified as a collector. Which means it's a sort of a medium classification street, you know, carrying slightly higher volumes than a, um, just a local street, but uh, still um, qualifies and, and applicable for the traffic calling program. So let's talk about um, some of our tools when we think about uh, Edge Lake. Some of the tools that we use in our program for traffic calming, um, we use speed cushions. And these are rubberized devices that are installed on the street. They're vertical devices to travel over. Um, and they are modular so that we can form them to the width of the street. So um, if you have, so in both of these pictures, they're uh, three wide, but we might do them two wide, um, depending on how wide the street is. So these are designed for speeds in the 20 mile per hour range. And um, they they are seven feet long and six feet wide. And you see these gaps here, that's so that emergency vehicles aren't uh, as impacted by, by the um, having to slow down to, to go over the devices, but they're still wide enough that passenger vehicles, um, when they travel, travel straight over, they still are impacted and need to slow down. Um, when we install these, they have uh, warning signage associated with them, uh, and we install them in a series. So it's not just one set on a street. It, we will install them around 500 feet apart so that we maintain, a driver maintains the consistent speed along the street. Mm -hmm. That's the goal. Yeah, but this is just a suggestion, I guess. Mm -hmm. That's not going to work so much in a lot of the areas because. People are going to drive around those on people's lawns. That's all I can see, unless there were sidewalks actually installed with curbs. Right. So, so it's the it's more to the premium mm -hmm. So there there's yeah. the more. Oh, okay. yeah. 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 yeah yeah yeah. And and, and we yeah. have some fixes to that as well. Oh, yeah. 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 And if he could say my questions to the end because some of the questions, a lot of the questions are going to be covered. Um. So if we could just hold off and then we'll get all the questions at the end. Thank you. Thank you. So, um, another tool that we use is some signs and markings. Um, so radar feedback signs, mm -hmm. uh, they flash the speed if a driver is going, uh, too fast, uh, or faster than the speed limit that's posted. Um, we do some interesting things with, uh, zigzag pavement markings to alert drivers to, um, uh, something coming up in the roadway, maybe a curve or a hill or a crosswalk in this case, in this picture. The narrowing, um, Edge Lake sort of already had this experience with the bike lanes installed. Um, so the pavement is narrowed that way. <laughs> and then, um, no, the, uh, the others. 
and then um, speed tables. And um, these are similar to the cushions, but they are um, they are flat on top and longer as you travel over them, so that um, a vehicle's wheelbase like sits on top of the devices. And just for clarification, what Inga is doing now, she's going over the different types of traffic companies. So this is not saying that this is the one you're getting. She's going through the different types, and then at the end, we'll discuss what the recommendation is for your area. Correct. Correct. So those are slightly faster speeds um, than the speed cushions because they're longer and flat on top. So traffic circles, these are um, concrete devices that are installed like at intersections. And um, and um, so they're sort of like you travel clockwise around or counterclockwise around them like a roundabout. Uh, but they are they create a horizontal reflection in the road as opposed to the vertical that those other devices that I was talking about are. So those are um, devices that you have to have all the right scenario or, or characteristics of an intersection to get that to, to work because it needs to be wide enough to still allow vehicles to travel around the central island device. They, are, they can be useful in, in series or specifically at intersections. Um, chicanes, these are interesting um, uh, tools that Nashville has used in the past um, on a couple of streets, but they are a way to near the street and create a um, kind of a zigzag or approach as you drive so that um, you have to negotiate those curves a little bit. Adds curve to a straight street. Essentially. You don't have to pay <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So these um, well, they can they can be at uh, created through like bulb outs on the side um, or alternating the parking on side to side on the street. So the program, I'll go back and talk a little bit more about the program and where we are in the program. So uh, there was an application that was applied for for traffic calming for Edge of Lake. And, um, and so that's like our first bullet there on the left. And then we went into that participation process and selected this street at, into the program. And now we're here at meeting one. And so at meeting one, we're here to, you know, Tell you more about you know what the program is because some of you may not have known there was an even an application for Edge Lake um, or that there's a project coming, and we advertise these with the uh, post postcards that um, some of you got in the mail if you live directly on the street. Um, then you you should have received a postcard. We send those to the property owners that are aware of the meeting, and uh, that was some good feedback we got from council member from past. Uh, Pass rounds to get that message out uh, to, to people. And then uh, we're going to talk about a concept plan that we've put together uh, for this street and um, get your feedback and thoughts on it. You know, this is just a first, first look, uh, and we're here to, to know what the neighborhood wants uh, the, and the folks that live on the street want. Then we go back and we will refine our design based on what we hear tonight. Um, you know, we want to move forward. We, we can. Uh, create that um, more finalized design, and then we'll have another meeting so that we can continue to share this information to, to more people, hopefully uh, get the message out even further about um, you know, the project, and, and we'll present that final plan uh, at that meeting. And then we get into, and, and provided that we're in agreement uh, about that plan with, with you all, we'll move into the, the community support piece. And so, um, in, that, in our program, we want to make sure that we're investing money uh, and, and things of this nature on this street that is supported by the neighborhood. So we have an ba online ballot process so that uh, property owners along the affected street can, um, can vote yes or no for the project. And then we have a goal uh, that we want to reach. So it's 66% of favorable votes. The votes need to be in favor of the project. So I'll go into more detail about that. And we'll definitely talk more about that in the second meeting too. Uh, so we're just not there yet, but just want you to know that there's a there's a, um, a piece of this program that we need your input on and your, your support in order to move it forward. So after the ballot closes, um, which is a six week period, after the ballot closes, then we would, and if it's, if the project is um, 
uh, favored and we move forward, we would get into the ordering of the materials and then the construction. And that um, that time period, the ordering of materials and construction takes about four months. Um, And I put the wrong email address on here, but Gail Thomas is the program manager for um, for uh, NDOT, and um, he manages all the Traffic Common program, and so that's a great resource for you. My name, again, is Amy Birch, and my uh, email address is Amy Birch at birchtransportation.com. Uh, Had our, my coworkers um, email on there. Apologize for that. So, are there any uh, questions about the program now, or do we want to jump into talking about the concept plan? Go, go concept. All right. And Elaine, just let me know if there's questions in the chat box we need to address. Um, so, this is showing in blue is the edge of lake in the section of the street we're talking about. Mm -hmm. um, and so on the left side of the screen is Murfreesboro um, Pike with this traffic signal. And on the right side is the, all, is the always stop at Bell Road, right? And so what we're suggesting are the uh, speed cushions mm -hmm. installed along the street. And uh, this picture on the right shows some flexible delineators to try to keep drivers from going around the devices, um, and we could in install that. These um, particular ones, because of the street, I think before I said the speed cushions were seven feet long, these would be 10 feet long, or 10 and a half feet long, because um, of just the, the nature of the road, um, they'd be a little bit smoother, um, but still very effective. So we have a, uh, seven, sets along this length of roadway. That's that's the big reveal. So I'll pick in a couple of things. Um this is what the fourth one so, um <laughs> know a little bit about the traffic common now. So with these the way that they are situated um there's a lot that goes into the consideration. So when they look at the placement, they're looking at where driveways are, they're looking at where mailboxes are, mm -hmm. so that this is not placed in a way that is going to, um, it's still gonna be conducive for neighbors to be able to navigate the street um, and for residents to be able to navigate the street. So you don't have to worry about, you know, pulling out of your driveway and ending up on the speed hump. What that delineator, what that does, like Amy said, it's gonna stop people from being from your concern of people just like drive around. That's going to stop people from doing that. Um, it is flexible. So if someone were going full speed ahead and crashed into that, ideally um it would not hurt them so bad that it would be fatal, but it would definitely um, bang their car up if they try to plow through. So if someone tried to go around it, they wouldn't be able to. Um, these are set so that the speed is a consistent of 20 to 25 miles per hour um, based on the spacing. So once you go over one speed hump, you don't have time to rev up and speed up because you're now getting to the next speed hump. You also see the next one and we have the um, the warning sign associated with each uh, device. So you'll, you'll see that device as you Cross the other one, um, and you know it's coming. So, right, that's that's our main goal. We don't we don't want to you know, people to slow down really fast at one one set of cushions and then be speed up, up and take on to, get, uh, to make up time. I think honestly, I mean, it's just a problem in all of our areas to be honest. So, I'm gonna definitely be applying for <laughs> our our street. Can you apply for other streets even though you don't live on them? For yeah. example, Smith Springs, all the way from. So so this place yeah. wouldn't qualify because it's not the oh, it's not it's just too much too much volume. Because there's elementary school there and they're going to the speed limit for the school though. Yeah. So it's really bad. So ideally you want to be you want to apply in the neighborhood where you live yeah. because this is a neighborhood driven project. 
So even like myself as a council member, I advocate for all of District 29 to get as much traffic common as we can, but this has to be driven by the neighbors because we have to get buy-in from the neighbors saying that they want this project. So even uh, on the application, I'm not sure if they updated it, but on the application they had where you have to have signatures from multiple neighbors. Like you have to have the people in that community saying this is, this is what we want to do. So it needs to be, it needs to come from that particular um, neighborhood. So, um, Amy, do you have the video on here too? I, for this presentation? I don't. Okay. Of the, of the... The, yeah, so there's a video that's on uh, uh, national.gov on the traffic comment website, and I can send that to you all if you want to see it. But there is a video of what these speed humps are look like in action when the vehicle is going over them. Even if you are trying to speed over <laughs> that speed hump, it is going to slow you down. So it is not something where you could just, um, you know, speed through and blow through it. So, um, I was going to say one thing, you know, uh, these devices, because they have the gaps for emergency um, vehicles, they, um, some people tend to want to put one wheel on and one wheel off, right? Mm -hmm. I don't advise that. It is not comfortable to do it that way. Drive straight over them. They're actually sloped a little on the edge, which makes it more comfortable for passenger vehicles instead of doing one wheel in the middle and one wheel on the ground. Um, but even if you do it that way, even if a driver approaches it that way, they are still going to be uncomfortable and they're going to slow down. So either way, but, um, you know, if you live on that street, that's how you should. Okay. I'm, I'm still going to focus on the, the four way stop here. Um, why is there not something before that four way stop to kind of slow things down? And, and well, one of the reasons I'm here is my mother's house is beyond the four way stop. A car came through about 75 miles an hour and it's off the front of a car, lost control, and hit her. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And the policeman at the site said, you know, if they had just had some, the, or something else, rubber buffers, or oh, to slow well, the staff on that, that, um, that truck. And when I'm getting my three year old grandchild out of the car there in front of the house, the yards are not that big. Mm -hmm. And People are whizzing there. Sure. And well, we really think that. And don't stop at the four way stop either. <laughs> well, these are physically going to require some, uh, some slowing, slowing down. Um, and but yeah, we can, we can look at that. Yeah. We, we look at spacing between intersections. So we don't want them too close to intersections. We, you know, um, but we, we can look at that and see if there's a way to get it a little closer. You know, we're also. That one that you're pointing at, or I believe that you're asking about, is near Sailboat Drive. You know, we've still got to be. Yeah. So you you're talking about maybe putting one between Sailboat and and um, Bell at the stop sign. Yeah. And somewhere you should kind of slow people down for the for the four way that's, stop. That's great feedback. That's the kind of stuff we're here to listen to and and see if that makes sense. Um, the other thing I have, we also have grade to think about, but I think we've measured the grade and I think it's all uh, pretty much low enough that we, we don't have to um, worry about that. But that's another factor that we look at. So the survey wouldn't include the people beyond that stop sign. Correct. Uh, at this point, and that's what I was going to say, and my recommendation is to see if you all can go back and see if y'all can put one on the other side of the stop sign as well, if y'all will consider that. Because that stretch of Edge of Lake, um, it's it's about a block. It's a very small stretch. It would only accommodate one speed hump. Um, and I know for some of the other ones, we yeah we we looked at trying to see what makes sense. And I think for this, it makes sense to do one on the other side. So if you all can take that back and we'll take that feedback back. Thank you. Let's get back. <laughs> yes, we have a question on the chat. I think. Yes. Thank you, yeah. Eleni. So Jerry asked. If there's any chance that we would um would cause a car to go out of control, cars are going very fast. Okay, the question is, uh, would these devices cause a car to go out of control because the cars are already going very fast? Yeah. But we measured the speed on um on this piece of roadway, and we measured it the 85th percentile speed at 38 miles per hour, which that means that 85 percent of the cars that travel on the street during that day. We're going 38 or below, but it means that 15% of the cars are going 38 or above. Mm -hmm. um, so there is some speeding, certainly some speeding, and that's a very, um, very good question. But you know, we think these in a series, um, 
you know, they're going to be well signed uh, and marked um, the markings, the white paper markings on the devices uh, are retro reflective like signs so you can see them at night. Um, so we want to make sure they're well marked and and um, we, you know, we don't think that's not expected. <laughs> Can I can I talk? Is it okay if I ask? I'm the person who asked the question. We can hear you. Yes. Okay, great. Um, <clears throat> so I understand you you studied in that only about eight whatever you said eighteen percent are the ones going over the speed limit. But I'm talking about the street racers. Mm -hmm. They use that as a cut through, and they go. I we live at twenty five twenty five right on the the. Um, corner of Lake Villa and Edge of Lake. And we literally sit on our porch and watch these cars go by. And they do go super fast. Some of them, not all of them, some of them do. And the only thing I'm nervous, I mean, I want this to happen. Believe me, I want this to happen. I just, I'm worried that some Yahoo's not going to see the sign or blow it off. And if he hits, he, she hits that bump at 60 miles an hour, because I swear to you, sometimes they're going that fast. Is that going to cause? I'm just asking, you know, I mean, if they do, what would happen? Would he go airborne? Would he end up in the front of my house? Would, you know, um, and there's also a motorcycles that do it. I mean, is that going to cause them to go airborne? And, you know, and I'm not, I mean, Unfortunately, I'm not even thinking about them. I'm just thinking about where they're going to end up. Um, sadly, but we've we've been dealing with this a long time. So that's my question. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you for your question. Um, you know, we we've, we've installed these on streets all over the city already, and and haven't had that situation come up. And and lots of streets that have already qualified had similar situations uh, and and speeding. So, um, you know. I don't know that I can answer your question, like, where would a car go if they hit it at 60 miles per hour? But I think these devices are going to deter traffic from doing that because they physically can't can't do it um, and, and drive that speed. So that will that will. People will not choose this road to be the road that they are doing the speed in and racing on. I've driven over these. I've driven over them in the daytime and in the nighttime because if we're talking about bringing something to the community, I want to know what it's going to be like. So I've been to some of the places. I've driven them at daytime. I've driven them at night. There's no way you can miss it. I mean, just even driving up on it, there's no way that you miss it. And if for by chance, whatever reason, you don't see that first one, you're going to feel it and you're slowed down before you can get to the next one. So there's, um, it, it is, I guess you can't say that anything's impossible, but it is uh, very highly unlikely that something like that will happen. And, and okay. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm not, I literally, I want this to happen and this looks great. I just, I'm asking, you know, kind of bizarre questions, but so they don't literally slow people down. You if you don't see the sign, you do kind of go bump, bump, and you go, oh, wait, and you and you break because you're like, what was that? Is that kind of what? Right, it, so right. it doesn't literally slow them down. It slows them down because, oh, there's a sign, there's a bump, I should be going slower. And then once you feel it, you're like, oh, yeah, I need to slow down, right? Right, right. I mean, they, okay. they're not putting the brake. The devices themselves are not breaking the vehicle. Um, Except for or slowing it or somehow slowing the okay. I just I just wanted to be really, really super clear on what these did. To, you would have to it it when you hit like a speed bump, it naturally slows you down some, like you would have to accelerate to go over that bump at the same speed. But you also sure, sure. To travel that that road on a fairly regular basis. So once they so they've done it once, yeah. And all that stuff, they might even avoid being in that area. Correct. So the traffic might even go down. Correct. But um yeah, they're they're meant to, you know, cause drivers to change their behavior so that right. they drive slower over the devices and on the street. So that the street is safer for cyclists, for pedestrians and, and okay, so forth. cool. That answers my question. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. Yes, question back here. Oh, yeah, we have two questions. Go ahead. So, a kind of dumb question. In the streets, you put this on like in the past. Does it work? Yes, yes. In the, on the streets, it works. 
it works. Um, it, and this, the streets that we have put it on, the residents that live on those streets are very happy. Uh, and that's why we're kind of expanding the program and NDOT is, is investing in this program because there's been a lot of positive feedback about um, these quests being installed. Okay. Signage. What is that? Is that a sign in somebody's yard or is that a sign on the street or what mm -hmm. do you do so the signage are the um the yellow or orange diamond signs and they would say speed cushion on them and uh they would also have a uh, a plaque that sh shows the advisory speed of 20 miles per hour um and we would put them um not at every device um or but in advance of every device but we're we're looking at you know property lines. We're not putting them like right in your front yard. You know we're gonna use some um, uh, some of our experience and uh, engineering to figure out exactly where to put those signs so they're not um, too much clutter in your neighborhood. But we still want them to be seen um, and and uh, advise drivers as they approach the devices that that they're that they're approaching these speed cushions. Um, so again, we try to put them along. Um, property lines and so that they're not in front doors. And and like Councilwoman said uh earlier, these uh the cushion devices, we're not putting them at the back of your driveway so that you're backing over them to to get in and out. We're we're spacing those away from driveways and so we have a lot of things to look at, you know, location of driveways on both sides of the street and, and where they fit there. So, you know, again, this is just an aerial with some um some images on it, uh showing the approximate locations. So we'll we'll have more details uh, at the next meeting about where um, where those could go. I have we have uh, shown some addresses up here. If you can't read them in the room, I can uh, read them out. But you have a question? I have like many questions. <laughs> okay, you keep adding to mine. <laughs> yeah. So um, one of the questions: uh, Where exactly, or do you know where they were speed testing? The road. Did you speed test it in one spot? Did you speed test it in multiple spots? How close to Bell Road? How, you know, whatever we have. Um, right now, I don't know exactly where we tested it, but uh, we tested it somewhere between, uh, you know, on this highlighted blue area, and we would test it in more of a straighter section typically, um, but not really close to Bell Road or Murfreesboro. It would be away because we wouldn't want to um, have the cars that are slowing down for those traffic control devices to affect our speed. So we're trying to capture, you know, the place where we think it's going to be the highest. And I did want to um, uh, circle back about the speed real quick and I'll come back to your questions. But um, earlier when I was talking about the speed that we measured, I said we measured the 85th percentile speed as 38, not 30, 38 miles an hour. Um, so that means that 15% of the traffic is going above 38 miles an hour. So just want to speed. It's like that. <laughs> that's pretty close. Something else pretty close. Uh, it's a lot of speeding. So, okay, back to your question. I just want to clarify. Um, next question. I know y'all typically use these particular devices, but there's other devices out there that can be used. And uh, some of them are, well, now on James Robinson Parkway, it's one place in town that they actually can do this. I've seen them use another place. Right? It's like a series of four little like, strips. Mm -hmm. um, Rumble strips. Uh, Rumble strips. So the yeah. Um, and and I'm just like, I'm kind of familiar with them at the shape and where they use these a lot, right? As they're coming up to an intersection. Mm -hmm. And they'll, they'll put like four, and then they'll space it out, and they'll put four more. And it looks really well. And this is like in a type of area where people are just flat flying down the street. All right. So, and, and they can get away with it. But it actually does help. So the mm -hmm. so the question, I'm going to repeat it for those that are joining online. The question is, what about other, um, tools in the toolbox, um, specifically rumble strips to, to slow drivers down. Uh, NDOT does use rumble strips, um, and, and sometimes it is like on, you said, you, you use the example, James Robertson, um, in advance of crosswalks and things like that, that we're try, trying to 
draw neighbors or drivers attention to that type of um, obstacle in the road or, or situation that they need to be aware of. Um, we don't necessarily do them in the traffic calming program. Um, and, and they have been installed on residential streets. We've gotten some feedback on some streets. I think Brewer was one of them where they were installed and they, they didn't like them. The, the folks that live right there next to them, they were very loud and didn't, didn't like that. So uh, we've kind of, we, we don't really have that in our toolbox anymore. We're not using it because of that feedback that we've gotten, but we do use them uh, and that does use them or like suggest like the uh, example you said it coming up to stop signs and things like that. I have seen something different too that's not rumble bars, but what about their they look almost like spots, but they're like strategically placed to where they're kind of like not to be too bumpy, but enough to get their attention. Mm -hmm. And it's not loud. So that would be a benefit for that part. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're like they look like basically just round little oh, concrete yeah. mm -hmm. and things that just feel yeah. a little bit. So we haven't. I don't think we've used those um, back on the rumble strips. Another thing is, uh, over time, drivers learn that it doesn't. They don't need to slow down. It's just mm -hmm. they yeah. they just drive. There's like less effect. They feel less effect when they're driving faster over than when they feel slower. Oh, with uh, in conjunction with others. I mean, I'm like, just mm -hmm. use rumble strips. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah. I see. If you're speaking to things, and then if you approach the stop the sign, yeah. Mm -hmm. Instead of using the uh, speed to the green cell mode in there, what if you use the rumble strips? That's good feedback. Or on the other side, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. where the flight is. Just mm -hmm. to keep people from flying around that corner. It's, that's that's what they do. And they don't care for anybody in front of you or anybody in front of them either. They'll they'll fly around the way. We've actually used our mailbox as a speed control to the dancers. Good work. <laughs> no, it really does a number on the phone. <laughs> I put it on so, yeah, I'm sure. um, I think the, the next slide, I mean, if they're going through the houses that are a part of the project, it, it is, it is. So, um, I'll jump, jump to this, um, image. We do have one more question in the chat. Uh, that's the wrong image. Yes. Um, other sketch. We think this will uh, reduce the amount of traffic that's on Edgeley. Well, reduce, the the amount, amount reduce the amount of traffic on edge of lake um we you know we don't that's not necessarily the intention of the program our, our main goal of the program and, and installing these devices is to slow cars down um slow drivers down but it may be a uh, unintended consequence that um may occur but that's not our, our primary goal um so Yes. What so you are the, the expert, the professional, I'm not. What are the disadvantages? Disadvantages. So the question uh, is, what are the disadvantages to these um, devices? You know, some people find them annoying. You know, if you're you live on the street and you've got to go over them all the time, you know, that may be um, you know something that you get bothered by, um, and you know, there's more breaking maybe on on the street, but um, yeah, they're they're designed they're rubber, so they're not um, they're not made of asphalt or anything like that. They're they're rubber and and can take that. Uh, yeah, but you are talking about doing the wider, so what do they do? like the ones on Keeley Drive, some of them that are on this and Keeley, they are awful because you can't just drive a new normal. You almost have to get down in the 10 miles an hour to not feel it. And it's the length of the street. Mm -hmm. So to me, there's a difference between that and something that gets me going. I'm fine to go 20. I mean, it's my street. I'm mm -hmm. fine to go 20 or 25 or 30 or whatever. I do that anyway. But some of them are really irritating. If you're talking about 
kind of a longer. They are. They are a little longer. These, the ones that we would put on on edge of lake, um, have a three and a half foot section that's flat on top. Um, so they are designed for a little bit smoother travel than the ones that I think are on Keeley, which are seven feet long. So they are a little bit um, longer and smoother. Yes. What would be the speed that a normal person would go across that wide? Uh, the about yeah. twenty, about yeah. twenty. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah, which is you know around the Keeley one, but Keeley's probably a little bit lower mm -hmm. um, because they're just short, a little shorter. Yes. Um, just a question. Okay, say for instance we have a snowstorm mm -hmm. and we've got uh, how, do, how does it get the snow removal off our street and put it in some part? You come out and remove. Yeah, no. well, or how does it, they would, they would, how does it, I believe they would salt all this. Yes, so, I mean, they, we have them on streets and right. have been on streets yeah. for a long time. They get salted and, and, and they get salted and they're back. Mm -hmm. They're okay. Well, mm -hmm. um, sure, that's a great question. And um, they are on a maintenance schedule as well. So I know we, we talked about that in one of the other meetings. So, you know, the same way that our streets are on a payment schedule. There will be a maintenance schedule so that the device continues to be attached. Sure, sure. Um, and the other thing of, about them is because they're modular and they're rubber, you know, if uh, we need to, if NDOT was paving your street, we would just drill them up and store them while the street's being uh, um, paved and resurfaced and then, and then put them back. And so there's nothing lost there really, except for some. You know, manpower and time uh, to do that, and then if the, if you know a piece of one or one is damaged, it's not a whole fix. You know, we can just replace the one that has has been uh, um, damaged. damaged. <laughs> Thank you. But it's more cost effective than like say concrete or um, asphalt. Yeah, for those reasons, they are much more cost effective because they can they have a longer lifespan and um, can be moved and reused and, and that, that sort of thing. Yes. That's right. So I'll talk about the ballot some um, and that because um, I think we've talked about the devices and everything. I don't want to keep you all night. Um, we can talk traffic calming all day if you want, all night if you want, but uh, I'll talk about the ballot. And so the folks that will receive the ballot when we get to that point after the second meeting and we've you know refined our plan, um, the ballot will go to property owners that live along that street. So all the residential property owners uh, on the street between um, between Murfreesboro and Bell will receive a card, a postcard in the mail, and there'll be um, access through a QR code or a tiny URL or both will be on there, but to access the ballot. And you can vote online. You can vote yes or no. The plans will be posted as well. So you'll be able to, anyone that, not familiar with the project, but receives the ballot, they'll they'll have access to the plan so they can review those uh, and vote yes or no. Um, and the the postcards have a unique ID um, that uh, we'll we'll use to make sure that you know we only have one vote per per property. Um, it's you know it's not everybody that lives in your house can vote. It's one one vote per uh, property. Um, and and for the homeowner, so if you are a renter. It is the homeowner that has to vote. Um, but in God and the uh, the the birch company, birch conservation, mm -hmm. um, they are making sure that the that the ballot actually goes to the homeowner. So if someone is renting, but the homeowner has another address, the ballot goes to the homeowner. I've received one of these ballots because Castlegate um, has gone through the process, and we've gone through the voting process. So I can attest to. It is very easy. One thing that I advocated for, and I'm thankful that that they are there, uh, they really took this into consideration. Um, I understand that not everyone is tech savvy. Not everyone is going to be able to go online. Not everyone can use a QR code. So there's also a phone number. <laughs> so if you are not able to access the online capability, I still want you to be able to vote. So there is a phone number that you can call directly about uh, your ballot. And it is on the card. It is on the card. It's direct to Gil Thomas, who is the program manager at NDOT. And he's guided several people to, to vote um, and help them through that with their with their card. So um, that's that's definitely an option. 
Uh, and it's a six week window. So, you know, there's a start and an end. So this doesn't drag out forever. Our goal is to, we've identified your street as, as qualifying and needing traffic calming because you've asked for it and the, the um, data says so. Uh, so we don't want to make this last forever, you know, a year down the road. We used to do a door to door petition. We've moved to this ballot process with a window of time because these projects were just dragging on. Um, so we're really happy about ways uh, that the neighborhood can, uh, the property owners can vote um, through that ballot process. And one other thing, um, what I did with the other neighborhoods, just to make sure that, again, we're trying to be as inclusive as possible. Um, once those ballots go out, uh, I do office hours and you all can come to the office hours if you're having a hard time voting. So if for whatever reason you're struggling with it and for whatever reason, you know, you didn't feel comfortable calling that phone number, um, we, I just had uh, office hours back in August so that anyone who had already received their ballot that needed help could come directly to me and I worked with them so that they could cast their ballot. So I will do the same thing. Once you all get your ballots, I will make sure that y'all know, uh, put it out in the newsletter when the office hours are so that you can come. Of course, you can come for anything in office hours, but in particular, if you need help with that ballot, I'm available to help you. Yes, we have a question back here. Yes, that's a great question. So we, uh, the, the vote and the favorable response is based on how many uh, property owners vote. So we take the number of votes and we need 66% of those that vote to be in favor of the project. So it's not 66% of all the properties on the streets of the votes. So you are uh, encouraged to get your neighbors to vote. Um, Councilwoman's excellent at sharing that information through her, um, through her newsletters and everything. So I know she's going to help you get that word out, um, but it's specific to those that get the cards that they need to vote. So. And that way it doesn't penalize for individuals that don't vote. So if someone that's isn't interested and they just don't vote, they throw the card away, then you all are not being penalized. Um, so it, everyone who lives, the property owner's own edge of lake through that uh, window will get it. Um, but also if there are side streets that get in, they get it like folks say no, not anymore. It's property. They're not doing that anymore. Okay. It's properties that um it so if you're on a corner lot and your um maybe your address is the side street, but you have a property edge on edge of lake, you would still get a vote. Um, but it's it's so it's just properties that have frontage on edge of lake. Okay. Uh, how is this funded? By the way, it's just funded. Um great question. That was much council. <laughs> funding for it in the in the budget so we did uh in our last budget we voted to add more funding for the program so that we could expand it because so many people in our community want traffic comment um so this was something that we worked really hard to, to make sure that we could get extra funding for and so this is this project is funded this is not like we're working we're towards waiting. a yeah. later fund this is a funded project so you know as long as we come to an agreement on the plan and, and the support is demonstrated through the online ballot, then it will move ahead. Is this something that could um, help with property values or decrease them? I, I, I don't know how to answer that question. Um, so good question for like a realtor. I don't see it decreasing the value, but that would be a question for a realtor. Uh, yes, I, I, I can address that in the sense that they put these in quite a few neighborhoods with property values are much higher in this area. Uh, you can go to Green Hills over on Lombardi. There's several streets over there. They have this exact same program, and people want that because there's factories off the road for a This is going to do nothing but slow traffic down, make it a better street to live on, keep people safer as they're walking through the road. As they put the sidewalk program in, which they're already working on, it's right. going to help. Uh, yeah, there might have to be some adjustment of curbs to the city. I've already talked to people looking at uh, the sidewalk program, but we need something like this. There's not a perfect solution, but I'm telling you, if you don't do this, you're going to keep getting what you have. You had a question here. Yeah, if the Thank intersection you. of uh, Murfreesboro and Measure Lake, mm -hmm. um, the cars will come down Murfreesboro and turn left on Measure Lake, mm -hmm. supposed to do a right and turn. 
Our car will start way early and we're going to change across. Pretty much every time you go there, there's a pile of glass. Uh, is there a good study now to see if there's enough room susceptible to be all about? Or even a small thing being stripped just on that, like on, on into the lake. Um, so that you can use this. You could have a sign. Sign? Yeah, there used to be. There was a Driveway for that for the commercial. No, it was there. Okay, yeah, yeah. Well, that's good. Yeah, no idea why they didn't do that because people don't know what lane that's supposed to be in. Okay, I'll take note of that. Yeah, I would say that's some feedback that we can give you back to in that that would be outside of the traffic comments, but that's definitely feedback that we can get to in that. So that an engineer can do an evaluation of that and, and determine if that's a problem. Yeah. We there should be actually three lanes there, and we only have two. So you have people that zip around, and then you have people that come around the third lane and run the lights. Yeah, you know, and I don't know why more people don't have accidents. Yeah, or they probably do have crashes so there. <laughs> Um, I, that would be that's outside of the traffic comment mm -hmm. program, so she wouldn't have that information because she would traffic comment. But what we can do is I can talk to in dot to see what information I can find, and if there is information, then I'll share that out in the newsletter so that you all can get it. Um, but that would just be outside of this. So, what is the request? The request is to make it three lanes instead of two lanes, or well marked lanes would be. <laughs> So just like the striping and the it, well, the the median kept people from getting over where people were turning into them. Okay. Um, so so what we can do it, Amy, we can both kind of work on that. So mm -hmm. what I'll do is I'll circle back with NDOT and see if I can find out why, and then have the engineer to come out and look at it to figure out what's the best option. Is it the median? Is it the striping? And then I'll work back to you all. And then if we need to reconvene, we can reconvene and have another conversation about what this will look like. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. I'm also based on what I'm saying about this project. Based on the time that we've been tracking it, everything goes to planning. A little looking at this for then July, August, and twenty three. You oh, said 2023? When, when it be July, August of 2023. So it will, it'll depend on a couple of things. So they take the feedback from tonight's meeting and tighten up the plan. And then we need to get our second meeting scheduled. Usually I try to give, if, if I can, I try to give at least like a three week notice. Sometimes they end up getting a two week notice, but I try to give at least a three week notice so that people can plan and make sure they have something in to come out. We will do that second, or that second meeting. If we're in agreement with that second meeting, then the ballot process will start. They will mail out the ballots and give you all that six week window. The uh, once the window closes, if they meet the criteria, then they go ahead and start. And the the, the turn is actually pretty short. They don't have these. Um, they're not just like sitting in a warehouse. So they do have to be you know ordered and and, and shipped to us. But it is a very fast installation process. So you're looking at, I think Amy said yeah. four months. Max. Yeah, total four months about for the ordering, you know, after ballot closes, if it's successful to order the materials and get it constructed. But the construction, it's not going to take two months to construct. That's going to be like a one week. It's yeah. going to happen over a week or maybe just a few days, depending on weather, of course. But, but I would anticipate that it is before July of 2023 that this happens. Yes. So yes. it should be significantly before that. This question probably more for you, Alicia, than, than me uh, as part of this project. Okay, which is going to come first, the sidewalks or this? That's a great question. And you brought up the um, the uh, sidewalk earlier that's been staked, right? Yeah. So um, we will, we're going to proceed with this project, you know, and it's sort of ignoring the sidewalk, knowing it's coming. But once we get to that point where we're ready for construction, we'll find out where the sidewalk project is. So if it's under construction and it's almost done, we'll wait to install. Right. You know, if it's 
yeah, you know, somehow stalled out. Maybe you probably and have I a have great a, timeline. <laughs> so I do have an update on that that is going to be in the newsletter. And I apologize when my cell phone died. I just got an email yesterday about the timeline. So I've been following the project. I got an email yesterday about the timeline. That information was going to go in the next oh. newsletter. And if my phone wasn't dead, I could tell you right now, but the phone <laughs> literally died while we were up here. So my apologies. Oh, um, but I'm, I'm hoping to get the newsletter out within the next couple of days and it'll have that information in there. Okay. We also have a sidewalk coming on Hamilton Church, which I am extremely excited about. Um, unfortunately, we've had multiple fatalities on Hamilton Church. Um, the uh, during my election in 2019, uh, a young man by the name of Dwayne Sims. I will always lift up his name and always make sure that he remember. Dwayne lost his life walking on Hamilton Church, so that was something that was very near and dear to me. And I wanted to make sure that we had a sidewalk on that street because no one should lose their life while they are trying to walk in their neighborhood and walk into a front work. So that is something that I've been trying to get us since 2019 and that sidewalk will soon be underway. So that is something that I'm so excited about, but that will also be shared out in the newsletter as well. Taking your notes to go back, you've got to put from the stop sign at Bell through the rest of Edge of Life to Willow Hill. Is that just with the school there and just with kind of the cohesiveness of the neighborhood? It just makes it just my day. Yeah, to just do the whole street. So we're not kind of choppy. Absolutely. And and just to give you all a little background on that, too. Um, so I've been working with and uh, whatever in dominant public works. We have been working on that intersection. Um, I know uh, right next to Miss Vicky's mom, um, that house got hit. Once or twice. Yeah, he got he got hit as well. Mr. Watkins, his house got hit as well. So um and it is a I've had the engineers to come out and it's just it is a perfect storm. Like unfortunately it, it doesn't really look like a slope, but it's a bit of a slope. So when people are driving, you know, when you're going down here, you're just going faster, you know, so it's kind of accelerated instead of like slowing down. And because of the um when they look at like traffic lights, they have to space it out and there has to be a certain amount of space between the various traffic lights. So because where another traffic light is situated and another traffic light is situated, they weren't able to necessarily put a light there. So I've been working with uh, public works trying to figure out what is the solution for this intersection because it is absolutely not safe. So what we're hoping is that this will help alleviate some of those issues but I'm 100% with you. If I want as much as we can get um, so that the community can be safe. Like I said, it's right there across from the elementary school. So we want to make sure that the kids and their families are safe. And then the playground there. So kids are going, you know, kind of Absolutely. across the street, you know, you get to the playground. Absolutely. Um, we, we will certainly take that note and, and um, see what we can do with it. We've got to check with in that on that. <laughs> so the, for the sidewalks, uh, you know, wait for a second. Um, is that spread across everywhere or just like it's an application kind of thing? So it's not an application for the sidewalk. <laughs> Although you may be able to request request it through Hub, and I'm gonna pass these out to um I know Amy talked about Hub a little bit, but I, I talk about it in every every single time that we get together. Um, the Hub app is amazing. You can go to hub.national.gov or you can call 311. And if you can just uh, take one and pass it around, um, the information is right on the back of the card here. You can report anything on Hub, whether it's like property standards, like if someone's grass is too high, if someone's parking their car in the yard, and the, if there's potholes in the street, if the light, um, if you're driving down the street, if the street light is out, if you want a traffic study done, if you, I mean, if you see a aggressive driver or speeding car, uh, if your driveway does not, uh, it's not a smooth transition from your driveway to the street. I mean, anything you can report it on Hub, and then they will follow up with you with the progress on that. If you don't hear back from them, which they're really good at closing out pretty quickly, um, but if you don't hear back from them, let's say it's been a week, because they're usually a quick turnaround time. If it's been a week and you haven't heard back, call or text me and just say, hey, counsel, I can check on this, and then I can, you know, put a little fire under this and try to expedite it, but they are really good. Our beautification commissioner, Greg Donegan, is here. He can attest to it. We literally drive around the district 
pulling down like illegal signs and recording stuff on hub. So, you know, he's driving and I'm uh, putting stuff in hub or he's doing that on his own. I do it on my own. And it's been very, very effective. So uh, I believe there is an option to request sidewalks on hub. But to answer your question, the city has a sidewalk prioritization plan and that plan prioritizes community centers. It prioritizes um, uh, areas where kids will be so community centers, schools, libraries, things of that nature. Um, we are, you know, 20 to 50 years behind transit, transportation, sidewalks, walkability in our city. So with, <laughs> so with projects like Vision Zero, like we are trying to make sure that we're investing in alternatives in the community. So I know everybody wants a sidewalk. Of course, everybody's not going to get a sidewalk, but we continue to fight to get as many as we can in our neighborhood. But they do evaluate the areas to see where it makes the most sense, where you see the most pedestrians walking, where you're going to have the most children. So I know down to the springs, um, I can't remember if they've already gotten approved, but I know that they were looking at the area down to the springs out of elementary school. Um, we have it right here in front of the community center. And obviously you wanted to go further down, but you know, we're, we're kind of limited with where we can have them, but we are trying to get more in that area. Can I ask something real quick? Yes. To the other things really. Uh, Valuable, I think. Um, I spoke to the people that run uh, organizations, or whatever. Uh, it's been in effect now a little over two years, so they're starting. They're actually looking at the data now. Before it was like, oh, there's trash here, we'll pick up. They're making an assessment of what areas are having what problems. And when I talked to them, they didn't know we were. They're like, yeah, you guys have a ton of litter reports, right? Right in the district 29. The person's like, yeah, that's my my route. So. They have the added some time because we call them to these places so many and have those drivers like, right, I'm just going to swing by here because it's always there. So, just uh, us supporting this really works. So, I would just be able to get more resources. We just need to let them know that. If you see a couch on the side of the road, you see a mattress, you see a toilet, just like report it. What I'll do, like, because uh, obviously I don't want you to text and drive. So, if you're in a passenger seat, you can report it. But if not, just like snap a picture. And then when you get home, it literally takes about 15 to 30 seconds. It is so fast to report it, but then they're able to come out and pick it up. So um, what happens is like litter begins litter, dumping begins dumping. So if someone sees a mattress, it's a mattress today, tomorrow's a mattress on the toilet. In three days, it's gonna be like five couches. Next thing you know, it's gonna be like a whole little jungle and zoo right there. So like we have to get that stuff reported as soon as we see it so that it can get picked up um, as quickly as possible. The other thing I like to make sure that everyone knows, and I'm going to share this, we're going to get that question, then we have one final piece of the presentation and we're going to wrap up because the community center is closing soon. But um, the, the last thing I want to make sure that everyone knows is if it's in the street or like right at the edge of the street, it's hub. If it's in your yard, it's the sheriff bulk item pickup. So if you see your neighbor, a lot of times people just don't know that. So in some cultures and some community, they put stuff out because they think this is a really nice couch and someone may want it. So they think that they are doing a good thing and a good deed by putting this couch out when in actuality to everyone else that is an eyesore and we don't want to see it. So sometimes your neighbors don't know. So what I've been, especially pre-pandemic, we had to change what I did this during the pandemic, but I would literally go to Greg and attest because he's been with me. I would literally go knock on the door. Hey, I'm your council lady. Not sure if you're new, but you can report this through the sheriff's office. They'll come pick it up for free. So if you Google sheriff's department, bulk item pickup, there's a phone number. You call it. They'll tell you when they're going to come out. It's usually a window of time. So they'll say, you know, we'll come out Friday the 15th between um, Friday the 15th and Friday the 20, whatever, seven days is for 15, 20 seconds. They'll give you like a window of time. Um, what I recommend is like, if you know that you're going to have something, don't put it out there and just let it wait. Call them, find out when they're coming, then the night before, put it out so that that way it's not sitting out as long. But, you know, we all are stewards of our community. So if you see it, you can kindly tell your neighbor. And if you don't feel comfortable, I understand. But, you know, we just have to get this stuff like reported so we, we keep our community clean. So, um, yes, ma'am. I also want to share with them what the spirit of my hand is calling on someone else to let them help out this little city. When I called for bulk to pick it up, I was told that 
They always pick up if the owner has to call. Mm -hmm. You cannot report someone else's. Correct. <laughs> Hub, you can. So you can report on Hub anything that you see, and it is anonymous. So you don't have to worry about um, your neighbor knowing that you called on them. Um, but I will warn you, if you call on your neighbor because they have a car in your driveway with expired tags, when they come, they're not just looking at that. They have eyes, so they're going to see that your grass is too tall. So I get called all the time. I reported my neighbor, and they retaliated by reporting my grass. No, the person saw that you had crap in your yard, and you got reported too. So just know that if you're reporting somebody else, they may see yours. But for the sheriff's bulk item pickup, it was only the property owner. But for hub, anyone can report that. So we've got to close it on out. Our last question is based on what we have presented today. So we know that there's feedback of can we get uh, either rumble strips or another cushion on the other side of Bell Road? Amy's going to take that back to the team. Um, so knowing that we've given feedback, Based on what we have here, are you all in support of this project? And would you all like to see this project go forward? Just give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down. All right. Okay. All right. So everyone, how many of you live on Edge of Lake that are here? Right. I so my son and daughter-in-law bought my mother's house and they're at the beach. So I think. Okay, good, good. So we're reaching the, the folks that are affected. But yeah, these are people that actually, and I made sure to put like, on the, the when I sent it out and I put it on social media, I made sure to put like Edge Lake. I got a lot of calls and emails about people that wanted to come to the meeting tonight <laughs> and not explain this is for Edge Lake. You know, we have to apply for your community, but this is strictly for Edge Lake. So um, what we'll do now is Amy will take her the feedback back to the team. They will work on their plans. They'll reach out to me once they're finished with their version. Then we'll schedule a second meeting. I'll reach out to you all via the newsletter. I primarily uh, communicate through the newsletter, through Facebook, um, through uh, Instagram and Twitter a little bit, um, but primarily through the newsletter and through Facebook. I do try to do call outs when I can, but I have to pay for those out of my pocket and they're really expensive every time I do one. So unfortunately, I can't do a call out every time we have a meeting, but I do try to do one um, as many times. What's, what's a call out? It's like a robo call. Oh. So like I'll, I'll do a recording and it'll send a message to like thousands of people, oh, yeah. but I pay out of pocket every time and they're not well, cheap. We, <laughs> MDOT's program will send those postcard mailers again. And they'll it'll be a hybrid meeting again with the link. So um, but those go just to the, the property owners on that, you know, that affected street. But yep. we'll, we'll definitely send those out as well. And then we need y'all to come back the second time. We need y'all to bring people bring with y'all. Yeah. And then we'll look at the updated plan. If everybody's in agreement, then we'll start the ballot process. And with that, thank you all so much for coming out. Again, this card has my cell phone number on there. If you all have any questions, concerns, you can call me, you can text me. That's the best way to reach me. Thank y'all for coming out and have a great evening. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Right. What about that means? My name is Elon somewhere. That's it. Do you know how many people are on this? Like, uh, I think it was like 100. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.